By definition, APRV is a time low, which is also known as your release time, of one second. And it's an IE ratio of four to one or greater with the patient spontaneously breathing. So when you're doing APRV successfully, you have all three of those things working together, okay? If you only have two of them, then you don't have APRV. Um, so to do AP, APRV, the first thing you're gonna do is you need to determine what the P pi is. Uh, so in order to do that, you would do a, a plateau pressure. You hit your inspiratory pause button on the ventilator, and then I get a plateau pressure, as you can see right here, of 22 centimeters of water pressure. So that becomes my P pi. Um, and then my peep low in APRV is always going to be at zero. Okay, so now to activate this, okay, make this all happen, I'm going to go vent setup, I'm going to change my mode to buy level, I'm going to hit continue, and then I'm going to take my time low, and I'm going to turn that down to one second. Okay, that's always your starting point, and oftentimes your time low will be as low as um, 0.6 seconds. What if um, time low isn't showing? Okay, if time low is not showing, um, but rather time high, you have three locks right here that can be set. Okay, so right now what I have locked is my time low. If I touch my middle lock and lock that, then I have my time ho time um, high to time low ratio set. If I hit my lock on the left, then I have my time high set. Okay, so in APRV, you always want to have your time low set and have that visible because that's what you're going to be adjusting, okay, is your release time. So I used time low and release time. I use those two terms interchangeably. Uh, another thing to remember in APRV is that your release rate is always somewhere between 6 and 12 breaths per minute. It's never any higher than 12 and usually not uh, any lower than 6, uh, at least when you first start a patient on APRV. Okay, so I have my plateau pressure was 22. I take my peep high, put it at 22. Take my peep low, put it at zero, and then I hit accept. So now I'm in buy level. I've got a time low of one second. I've got an IE ratio, okay, of four to one or greater. It's actually showing five to one. So I have two of my three criteria that need to be present for APRV. The only thing I don't have right now is spontaneously breathing patient. So with my test lung, I would just simulate some spontaneous breaths and now I have APRV, okay? So one thing I want you to notice, if you focus on the IE ratio, when your patient's breathing spontaneously, the IE ratio is no longer inverted, okay? It's a normal IE ratio of one to two right now, and that's a result of your patient just being allowed to spontaneously breathe. Okay, so those spontaneous breaths um, help with ventilation, and they also activate the thoracic pump, which helps to um, decrease thoracic pressure and improve venous return back to the right side of your heart. So that's why it's important that you have a spontaneously breathing patient. Okay, so, so we have APRV set up. The second thing that I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna look at my time low, and I wanna trap 25% of my um, expiratory flow. So right up here on my graphics, I see pressure time and I see flow time. I'm gonna change it so that all I'm looking at is flow time. Okay, so I'm looking at flow time. So I'm gonna look at end expiratory flow and compare it to peak expiratory flow. My peak expiratory flow, which is right here, is approximately, oh, about 70 liters per minute. My end expiratory flow, which is where the yellow line meets the green line, that's the end of expiration, and inspiration getting ready to begin, that is approximately at 20, okay? 
So one thing I can do to get more precise numbers, I can now rescale that so I can see things a little bit better. Okay. So here's my end expiratory flow. It looks like it's right at 20. And my peak expiratory flow looks like it's right at 70. So that is more than 25% that I'm trapping. Okay, APRV is a mode of ventilation where this air trapping, that gas trapping that you have occurring, helps with, rec helps with lung recruitment. So it's the only mode of ventilation really that I know of where you desire to trap gas. Okay, so let's say this is not 25%. Okay, say my end expiratory flow is at 10 liters per minute and I want to trap 25% then I need to take my time low and decrease it. Okay, So I'm going to go in the opposite direction for a second just to show you. Okay, Let's take my time low and we'll put it at, at, um, at 2 seconds. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look at these tracings again. Okay, So now I've got plenty of time for exhalation to occur. Time low is also my release time. My peak expiratory flow remains unchanged at 70. Now my end expiratory flow is at 10 liters per minute. Okay, So that is not 25% of uh, gas that I'm trapping. I turn this down. Okay, to one second, that's my starting point. And I should get exactly what I got before. Okay. Wait here, okay, and there it is right there. Okay, um, so, that's, uh, so that's where we want to be. You want to trap 25 to 50% of, uh, of your peak expiratory flow. And then the next thing you want to do is you can pressure support those spontaneous breaths that your patient is taking. Okay, you can do that either with pressure support, which is what's shown on the ventilator right now, or you can do it with tube compensation. So. To set pressure support, say your physician orders five centimeters of water pressure for pressure support. What you need to do in this instance is take your pressure support button. This says zero above your PEEP level. That's zero above your low PEEP. Okay, so 22 minus zero is 22. I need to set this at 27 in order to get a pressure support of five centimeters of water pressure. So if you look at your graphics now up here, um, you're going to see a pressure support of five. Okay, so there's your pressure support of five right there, not 27. Okay, all your patient's breathing is done at that upper peep level, um, and that's all there is to APRV at this point. Okay, so so now in order to wean a patient off of APRV, you typically do what's called a drop and stretch. And before you do the drop and stretch, you make sure that you have the FiO2 at 50% or less. Okay. Once you're down to 50% and you've got good oxygenation, then you're ready to do this drop and stretch. So what gets dropped is your P-Pi by 2 to 3 centimeters of water pressure. You lower your pressure support by the same amount. And then you want to stretch out the time high. Okay, so you want to stretch out the time high without interfering with your time low. The only way you can do that is by take your rate and then lower that by one breath per minute. Okay, so right here my time high is at five seconds. My time low is at one second. So if I take that rate and turn it down to nine, you can see now my time high has been stretched to 5.67 seconds. I hit accept and I've done the first part of the drop and stretch. Um, in two more hours, three more hours, four more hours, whenever